Hey, how's it going, everyone? We're going to take a look at Ninja figures this time. So these are pretty unbranded figures. They are from V Toys. I've never used them before, but looking on big bad toy stores and other websites, these Ninja figures looked pretty good. Uh, so they are six inch Ninja figures. They come in three different flavors. So we've not just got one here. We've got two. So we've got one, two, three in a Ninja formation there. They are basically the same figure, but in black, white and red. The clothing is just the only difference really um as far as i'm aware it should just be that uh, but they come with different accessories like sword kunai other kind of ninja stuff uh, which we'll go through later on and you'll see that so jump ahead if you want to see all of that but let's quickly go through the packaging uh, i'll only show the one because the rest are basically the same so you've got this pretty much black plain package with a ninja on the front holding his sword out and a kunai in his hand i can see uh this is six inch by v toys uh this is a chinese made figure so the english on and in and around the packaging is not exactly proper but that's okay you're not really going to read that more than once i guess but shadow ninja 112 collectible action figure down there down the side it's got the logo of that shadow ninja and then also you've got a sticker to say it's black the other ones are red and then white respectively so sn1 two and three i thought white would have been number two but eh. uh, on the back then he's got some text about this product again it's not going to be in the best of english or it's not going to be hey, properly edited but again it's it's fine it's not for kids as always v toy studio they i believe they may have done a batman figure like a a, a totally original batman figure I could be wrong there um but that if, if, if it's the one i'm thinking of that's a very cool looking figure as well. I don't have it, but I might check it out down the road. But that's the packaging. It's pretty plain, as I said. But let's get it open and see what the three ninjas are all about. So here we have all three shadow ninjas out of the box, which looks great. You can see all three in the back. We're going to focus on the black shadow ninja here. And then the red and the white are just going to be for decoration at this stage. Now, I didn't say this before, but I did actually get all three of these from a place called HK Toy Box. I've never used that website before, but they came through with these three figures. They were slightly cheaper than big bad toy so i can't remember the exact amount i paid but i'll put that on uh, the screen or in the description at least i think it's bigger they're cheaper than big bad toy store um and then the other thing before we get into the figure is the red one in particular i just want to say that one is more of a burgundy color so the video the i'm using my phone to, ca to capture this so it might end up being a little bit more of a vibrant red that's not true it's going to be much more of a burgundy color more that kind of mid red sort of color so just keep that in mind so let's get on with the option parts and then we'll go through the black shadow ninja so first we've got the option parts are going to be the hands so like most good figures you're going to have the fists already attached to this guy and then the first pair of hands we're going to go with is going to be to hold the shuriken or ninja star and there we go i've dropped one already and this is just really nice kind of flesh tone on them here you can see right there and then they kind of got that actually yeah you know it is to hold the shuriken but it's all of a bit of a an italiano hand i like the ninjas so you got the shuriken here which i've already just placed in the fingers but that's quite easy so you just slot that in very easy so probably best to have the thumb on top of the center ring or the hole of the shuriken so it doesn't kind of get you know drop out and that's pretty easy to do otherwise sorry the flesh tone by the way some of these hands we'll go into the next one do have slight variations in flesh tone it's not super noticeable once you've got this equipped to the actual figure it's going to be pretty fine and i kind of think it's okay because these guys are ninjas they're out in different kind of weathers uh, weather climates and so on so their hands might go kind of pale or a little bit crusty looking depending on the weather right but you got these hands which are just kind of your regular relaxed ish hands you can use those to kind of grab things or just kind of when they're in sort of motion you've got these grabbing hands like so or gripping hands here you can kind of maybe work out slightly that the right hand here or yeah this is sorry the ninja's left hand in my right hand this one you can see has a slight different tone on the palms and on the surface of the hands it's about the same it's a slight difference as i said you might not notice this on video but there is a very very slight difference we get karate chopping hands like so those are pretty straightforward and then we finally get an additional pair of fist like hands and this is of course going to be to hold some of the accessories e.g the sword or maybe even the sickle and chain weapons then we've also got this mask so this is one of the only things that changes obviously apart from the color of the ninjas but one of the other only things that changes between the different colored ninjas so this black mask here uh it's like a demon mask hopefully we can get that focus and there you go so this one here has got these gold teeth kind of spiking out hopefully you can kind of see that and this has got this kind of strap at the back i'll show you how to equip this later on in the video if you buy the red ninja or the white ninja you'll get different colors so this is for the white ninja here and this is going to be side by side with the black ninja here you can see and then we've got the red one 
sitting right here. So this one shouldn't be a bright red. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a pinkish kind of tone to it, but looks good otherwise. So I'll show you how to equip those later on. So onto accessories, this guy comes with quite a few and the accessories themselves are going to be the same for every ninja. So we'll just go through it once. So first you get the shuriken or the ninja stars that I showed previously. So you get three of these. There's going to be a hole in the center there. And then the other side is the same with a black center as well around that central hole. And then you get a pair of size like so which look pretty good. They don't have a sharp pointed end, so it's pretty safe to play with. I would just kind of say be careful with it because I have broken something, which I'll get onto. Not related to the size, but here you can see these bits are quite thin, so you just want to keep that in mind and be careful with it when playing around opposing the figure so you don't accidentally, you know, clash with that and then snap it off. That would be quite sad. We also have kunai here. You get three kunai. I've got two here. I'm just going to show you one here. They're quite small but they are quite cool as well. And then the other third kunai I've put in the belt, which was, I'll show you later on. I'll put it there because I thought I might forget to talk about the belt otherwise. So that's a good place to kind of store the kunai if you want to. Then we also get the tiger claws, which there is a pair of the tiger claws. I don't know why the other ones, I just left it in a box by accident. But each ninja comes with a pair of these tiger claws. They extend out quite a far bit. They're not too pointed at the end, so it's actually pretty safe to play around with. And then you've got this kind of gripping handle bit here. Not every hand is going to be suitable for that. So it's mostly going to be a slightly extended hand or a slightly gripping hand, not the one that you're going to use to grip swords because it won't fit around that fist. Uh, and then finally, we get to my favorite part. Actually, not finally. Uh, near final is one of my favorite ones is the sword or the ninjato that might, some people might call it. Um, and this is pretty cool. So it comes in its own sheath and you can take out the entire sword which is awesome. Now, before we get to the sword, here's the sheath. So it's wrapped around actually with a bow. So this bit here, the bow here, or the rope here is sculpted on the actual sheath itself. And then you've got this actual piece of string that's kind of tied into these little eyelet holes going down the side. I think it's pretty good. So you can just kind of get it like this and then get the guy to equip it. You can kind of see Red Ninja has it over his shoulder or his torso. And then the white ninja, I've got it on his waist. Uh, you can have it in different ways. I just had to mix it up a little bit. And, and then you can, as you see, the hole to put the sword back in. For some reason, the black version of uh, this ninja has it slightly kind of shaped. So it means it only goes one way, but the other ones don't always have that. So it's a bit weird. Then coming onto the sword, it's nothing special per se, but I still think it looks quite cool. You can see the handle there, and then it goes into the blade. You can see it's got more of a straight edge that you might see for typical samurai swords. And then the actual guard is quite different. It's got a bit of a kind of ninja star shape you can see there. What I will say though is two of my ninja swords broke. So each one comes with its own individual sword. So two of them broke and it was for the black and the red ninja I believe it was. They're kind of all the same sword. It broke at this point here so you can kind of see this little moist looking bit that's super glue. Uh, it looks fine, probably won't see it once it's equipped. Uh, and that's what I had to do. It snapped right at this point. Uh, so I just had to super glue it back. And it seems to be fine for now. It might break for you guys here. I would just say keep that in mind. These are very sensitive. I just had it in the, the sheath, equipped it, and then tried to you know have the character pose to grab it. And then, yeah, the handle broke. So definitely keep that in mind. They will probably break. Now, the final weapon, I believe it is now the actual final weapon, is going to be the sword and the ball on chain, or sword, the sickle and the ball on a chain. The Japanese name, which I completely forgot, Kusarigama, Kusarigama, something like that. Um, so this is pretty cool. It comes with real chain link here, which is awesome. If you've seen my other videos, I love me a little bit of real chain links on my action figure. So this is great. We'll start with the ball. Let's just start with the ball. It's simple. It's just a black weight inspired piece there with two little bits protruding at the end. And that's basically a little bit of a crack on this one. I think that's supposed to be for effect. And then that comes all the way to this real link of chains. It's quite long. You can see there is taller than the actual character. And then we come to the sickle bit here, which has a nice wooden effect handle with a little bronzy or gold little trims there at the top bottom here before it comes to the blade, which has a nice paint finish to it like it's been used. That looks pretty good. This is actually a really cool weapon. I quite like it. It's going to be a little bit hard to utilize, especially if you're going to pose to throw it. You're going to have to use some extra sort of uh, stand or some other character to wrap it around or something. But that's really cool of a weapon to include 
for this whole kind of ninja accessory pack. Now, as I said, every weapon is the same for the red ninja and the white ninja, so we won't go through it three times over. And I've kind of displayed them already equipped with their version of the sword. For example, the white version has got his ball and chain around his waist, his balls hanging out. And then we've got the tiger claws equipped on him as well. And then now we come onto the main figure, which stands six inches tall. In terms of aesthetics, they look like ninjas, right? Um, you could, I guess, let me start with, if you're good at sewing costumes at this scale, what's stopping you from doing it on your Marfex figure, which has crazy good articulation, right? But for those of us who aren't good at it or don't want to spend time doing it and just want the actual kind of gauntlets and the accessories, for example, then this is pretty good. This looks pretty darn awesome, honestly. So first he's got this cloth hood. Everything is cloth, basically, right? So he's got his cloth hood here, which has a little bit of a wire bit on the actual hood bit here. And then you can kind of see it kind of raises a little bit, depending on the angle and I guess how much you've used it. It kind of sits a bit too much. It's not too flush with the skull. Just play around with it. Eventually, it will kind of form into a nice kind of shape. He's got this kind of muffler wrapped around him. That's a simple uh, piece of cloth that's tied like that. You can undo that. It might undo itself naturally. A little bit of thread kind of flying about here and there. Not a big deal to me. You can snip them off if you really want to. Then on the outer layer, you've got the uh, rope bit, which I believe cuts off at a certain point. I didn't de-clothe this guy. I didn't want to do that and then ruin it. Uh, but that kind of cuts off here where his pants then start. And then beneath that, if you lift up the muffler a bit, it looks like he's got another underlayer in, which is where the sleeves are coming from. So another kind of uh, top and a similar, but I guess more form fitted rather these rather than the sleeveless and slightly baggy version of the outer layer. And then you can kind of see a little bit of flesh tone down there. So I, because I haven't declothed them, I don't have a super good idea of the way it looks in terms of where it's cut and whatnot. I can just feel that. Uh, and then we come down to the gauntlets, which look pretty good as well. Real kind of like metallic look to them. And they've got this kind of wrap that's sculpted around as well. These do these do actually shift around. Uh, once you take off the hands, the gauntlets can be removed. So if you say, for example, didn't want the gauntlets on, you can have that more minimal look if you wanted to. Uh, then we come down to the midsection with the belt. So apologies if, if the blacks are crushing now. Hopefully they don't. So the belt bit is basically a little bit of elastic that's wrapped around the figure like two, three times maybe, and then tied in a little knot. So it's, it's super basic. It doesn't do anything special. There is no wire in it, which I think is probably, I would have preferred a bit of a wire, maybe at least in the two bits that you know flap around it would have been good to have a wire on it i think people might just be better off either changing it themselves if they're a dab hand at doing it or you know just accepting it i'm just going to accept it for the time being but i'm sure if you it's very simple you can just get a piece of cloth one stitch a bit of wire and then you can sort it out yourself it's not terrible but it is kind of the cheapest part of the figure in my opinion then we come down to his pants pants use the same material as the top and that's pretty good. The other thing I should say about the belt is I've kind of played around with this figure. So the belt has risen upwards a bit. So you can now start seeing the elastic of the pants, whereas the others I didn't play around with as much. So the elastic still covers that. So you might see that getting exposed over time. It's not a huge issue. You can cover it. Just pull it down a bit. You know, use some plastic tweezers or something to pull it down if you want to. But the pants otherwise look nice. They've got a nice flair to them and nice room, amount of room to make sure you've got good leg articulation going on, which we'll get onto in a second as well. Coming down to the boots then, they use very similar armor and texture look as the gauntlets did or the arm guards. So that's really cool to see here. Uh, it's going to be the same for the red and white ninjas as well. So I'm just going to show you this one uh, figure. Then we've got the shoe here, which looks great as well. You might notice straight away there is no toe pivot or sorry, toe hinge, which is a little bit of a shame. This is the backside of the boots, which looks great. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty plain, but you know, ninjas are supposed to be plain for the most part, right? So I would say great looking figure overall. All three of them really, really awesome. Of course, with the white one, make sure you clean your hands before handling it. Even after you've handled just these three and you want to go back to just wash your hands because that's a plain white outfit. And I feel like mine's already turning yellow and I've only you know spent an hour or two with it. Um, so yeah, it's just something that you want to keep in mind if you're someone who eats what's it while playing with their figures now why would you do that but otherwise yes i really like the way all three figures look if you are only leaning towards one color white looks good you know white ninjas always look 
strangely awesome, but black is classic. But then red also looks great as well. It's more of a burgundy, as I said, but it does look great as well. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either of them. If you can afford to get all three, definitely try and get all three. So before I talk about articulation, just jumping back to the belt, because it is elastic, it does allow you to slot some weapons in there, like the kunai, for example, that I've shown here, or you can put the ball and sickle, like the sickle bit on the back, which you might see. Yeah, well, I've done that with the white ninja, but you can't see him there. Um, and that's for the belt. That's pretty cool. And then actually removing the hood, reveals the masked head so of course with the red ninja is going to be red and then the white ninja is going to have a white hood this very much looks like i don't know like a gi joe type of head i don't really play with gi joes but that's what it reminded me of but once you put the hood back on it looks more like a ninja i still think it looks pretty good without it but it head does look a little bit big the actual eye features though that's really important to talk about all going to be the same for every figure but i really love it i think it just looks super good super serious great expression on there great job overall so that concludes the way this figure looks i think it looks super super awesome whether it's black white or red let's talk about articulation because that's quite a fun one now with articulation he does have decent head movement but i think mine are a little bit stiff so looking up it's quite good now but before i had a lot of trouble with it looking down i had also had a lot of trouble but it seems to be okay i'm not sure if that's kind of maybe loosen up there we go yeah that's probably why so loosen it up a little bit or like lift it up a bit to extend the range of motion so but just make sure you don't get it so it looks too high up but he does look around left and right you're just gonna have to bear with a little bit of the initial out of the box stiffness now the arms are really good you're gonna have to feel a lot of this uh you can twist his arm around and back i'm not going to twist it all the way around because i don't want to tear the suit and you can just kind of feel that he can bring his arm forward like this in a crossing over which how how awesome does he look just doing that like just that pose alone is pretty pretty solid if you ask me so he can bring his arms back around there and then reaching back like so of course it might start looking a little bit cartoony with that but that's okay just play around with it and it should be pretty good but really amazing shoulder movement right there he's got the elbow bend which is solid and of course you've got a twist here which is actually at the bicep i believe it is it's all kind of at the shoulder bit but again really solid awesome looking arm stuff there and then we kind of finish off with the hand which is a little bit obstructed by the arm guards but it's not a huge deal lift them up a little bit if you want to get a slightly few millimeters of extra clearance and then you can kind of do the usual hand stuff there so arms are really really awesome stuff torso is where i'm a little bit confused because i'm again only feeling my way through it so i can't exactly see exactly what he's got so he can twist and it feels like the twist kind of happens well i'm not really sure like there's a little bit of a twist on the upper bit there you can see and he can't really lean, but when you get him forward, maybe it's the belts in a way. I hear this kind of like, it's this stiffness, but like, let me try and do it again. Like it's very, I can feel like my thumb's going to be on his, uh, yeah, man, man piece. But that's where I can feel when I kind of bend this guy forward, when it lets me bend him forward. It's not really doing it now. I struggled with the black figure to actually bend him forward. But there's a little bit of a bend. You're going to have to try and like figure it out, I guess. It's very, very hard to describe. You just have to really figure it out and feel your way through. I think the belt might be actually obstructing it a little bit. Let me also get rid of that. Um, but it definitely does bend forward. It just doesn't always do it. And the reason I think is like this midsection reminds me of a lot of kind of like, you know, the 12 inch dolls, maybe it reminds me of those kind of bodies. It definitely doesn't remind me of something like the SH fig arts or, um, muffic sort of stuff so something is a bit weird with the midsection it definitely does bend it's not bending on me right now so we'll go back to that in a second uh with the legs you've got no pull down so but it is quite twisty up top so you can kick up nice just kind of play around with it to get even higher which is really good in my opinion and then splits side splits looking very 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 cool and then like i said you've got the twist stuff here so you can play around with that once you get him into jumping poses got a knee bend like so and then the ankle stuff here and then the pivot but you don't have any toe hinge which i believe or not i believe i feel is a little bit disappointing i really do think a ninja should have toe hinge that's the only thing that i guess let me down like it's not even a huge thing because the rest is quite good the bend here i'm gonna have to try to get this to work but it definitely does bend forward 
There we go. Got him to bend. Finally, you saw that it clicks. There's like a clicking mechanism to it. You can see he's bent forward now, but I'm not sure why. So if I bend him back, there does that click and then there we go. You just have to kind of feel your way and find that little bit where it does allow you to bend. It's definitely not the same. It does remind me more of like the Hot Toys kind of figures. They have this weird bend to them as well, but I'm not sure how it works because I never have very good clear visibility because he's always clothed. But that pretty much sums up the articulation. All in all though, I really like the articulation. I think it serves its purpose. The actual front bend, yeah, of course, could be a bit better or easier to do. But generally speaking, this guy is going to get into poses that really do mimic a ninja. This one is probably just him jumping around. As you can see from the two in the back, the red one and the white one, just kind of leaping all over the place. But let's quickly move on to actually changing some parts then, because um, we've spent a long time just talking about the way the figure looks and its articulation. So first we'll start with uh, the mask. So, by the way, yeah, when you need to reset the arm, you're gonna again have to feel the arm around there. We've got to reset the arm there. So to actually equip the, the actual demon mask, all you gotta do is unhood it and then just slot that down it may end up giving you some hairline scratches on the actual mask, but there shouldn't be too noticeable. We'll just kind of go easy with it. Put the hood back on if you choose, and there we go. He's got the demon uh, mask on. It is raised a little bit. Because of the muffler, it might raise a bit, but if you've got plastic tweezers, you can probably shift that out a bit so it kind of covers a bit of the chin. Up to you how you want to do it. But that's going to be the figure with the demon mask equipped and looks really cool. Really, really cool kind of look to it. So to change the hand, it's going to be the same as other six inch figures. You just got to pull at the hand bit there. I did mention the arm guard can come up like so. You can take that off and keep it off if you want to. It is stitched down there, so it'll probably look fine. But I'm going to keep it on for the time being. Now, usually changing hands is quite straightforward and easy. It's just because this has got fabric and the arm guard. It just means you kind of have to hold tight with your finger at the back of the elbow here when you replace it with something else. So I'm going to change it to... The, uh, actually holding the sword hand because that's going to be a good one to also equip like the sword right so let's go with this one if you need to warm up the hand to get an easier slot then do that certain poses I don't always put the hand on properly I kind of just let it be um, and of course as I mentioned the arm guard does get in the way a bit so I'm going to do my best here and get that hand on there we go I feel like it's on and there we go that's the hand done. Do the same for the other hand if you want to and for any other hand that you want. Let's get this guy to equip the sword. Actually, the sword is going to be straightforward. I'm not going to do it on camera because I don't want to break the handle again. Feed it through the hand, but feed it sideways first and then twist it in eventually. But when you do feed it in, hold it. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to show you. It's easy to show you. So where I'm pinching it, that's where you want to do it. Don't do it from the blade because that's probably going to end up breaking at some point and then Eventually, just try and feed it down a little bit where you can. Get as much as you can done through just pinching it here. There we go. And then try and feed the rest down. Turn it so it's easy. And then there we go. And then you can turn it around that way so it's blade facing down, I guess. Just kind of angle it properly there in the hand. There we go. And there. There's he, the Black Ninja holding the sword in a much better way. Looks pretty awesome. We can equip the sheath onto him so we can either place it into the elastic belt just kind of pull that out or we can use uh put it on the shoulder actually just a tip if you do want to pull the belt out i usually use the kunai and then kind of like poke it out like this and then pull it out uh just be careful that it is kind of sharp enough to maybe poke a hole through the outfit so be careful with that for this all i do is Get it this way around. You can do it this way if you want to, but I get both ends like so, and then just yeah, slot it into the arm and then over the head like so. Because he's got his mask on, the teeth might get caught. Hopefully not. There we go. And that's it. He's now equipped with the sheath on its back. Now, if you wanted to use the weight and sickle, then you can just attach this to the same hand as well. Feed it in flatwards first and then twist it there into the midsection and then that should be good to go. Similarly for the side, you can equip that with there too, or you can use these hands, which I, I think were cool, but not quite good enough. So this kind of gripping hand, and then having the side kind of held a bit like this, well, without me dropping it, a bit like this. So the longest piece of the side 
So it ended up looking like this, right? Now it does look good, it's just the grip on it is not that great. So I would have personally preferred if this was a little bit more closed handed or gave a version that was a little bit more closed for that, like just for the side, because I think it's a great ninja tool to use and I think it looks great when they do equip them. But it's not a big deal, you can kind of play around with it as I did, but just something I wanted to point out. But that's the basics of actually changing some of those parts, but because I've already done some stuff with the ninjas up top here, I think let me get them off the stand. So here's the white ninja with the tiger claws already equipped on both hands. You can see there, I haven't bothered with the demon mask for these ones. I wrapped around the ball and sickle chain thing around and then I tucked it in to the back of the belt there. Of course it's elastic so you might end up loosening this over time, it's easily replaceable. I also decided to equip this guy with the sword at the hip because why not? I wanted this white ninja to just kind of be a little bit over the top and just equip as much as possible because he's one of those newbie ninjas and thinks having everything equipped is the best thing. And then we'll show you the red ninja over here, which I really love the pose that I got him into here, which is kind of like half casual, half like caught in a moment type of thing. So he's mid leap, you can see there. Really love the pose. As I mentioned again, I just want to make it crystal clear that this is much more of a burgundy red, not a bright, right, a bright red. So just keep that in mind. So I hope the uh, color it comes across better here uh, in my video. But if it doesn't, yeah, again, it's a burgundy red, not a bright red. So here we've got this guy equipped with just the sword on his back there. Um, pretty basic, I wanted this guy to be, to be honest, I'm gonna unequip everything and put it back in a box. But yeah, that's what the red ninja looks like. I think it looks great. I really like, once you get it into poses, these ninjas look so, so good. But to be honest, that kind of brings me to, well, my closing thoughts on this trio of ninjas. So by showing you just the black ninja, I've pretty much shown you the red and white one as well. Effectively, they come with the same accessories as each other. The only difference is gonna be that face mask is gonna vary in color based on which version you get, black, white, or red. They are really awesome figures. I'm very, very happy and surprised with how good they turned out. The only drawback for me, is, or two drawbacks, is really the sword broke, it was very sensitive, and then the lack of a toe hinge. They aren't deal breakers. Fortunately, the sword breaking hasn't been a deal breaker because super glue actually worked quite well. And the toe hinge, it's super ideal. I would prefer to add that in if they were gonna do version twos, but it's still a very fantastic figure or set of figures, even without that toe hinge. There's a lot of articulation and range of motion to play around with, really, really robust figures. The midsection is still a bit, something I have to get used to because I'm not really familiar with it. Everything here feels very sturdy from the arms, head, all the way down to the feet as well. So really cool stuff. Um, overall, super, super happy I picked up these figures. I saw them very randomly, just kind of window shopping online. And I thought, hey, these three ninjas look pretty good. I try to avoid excess figure buying these days, but these really stood out and I'm glad I picked up all three of them. If you can only get one, just pick the color that you like most because either one is gonna be an awesome get to you know have in your collection, it's super good. Otherwise, man, what really fun figures. These were really, really fun figures to play around with. So I'm glad I picked these up from, yeah, HK Toy Box, I think it was, never heard of that site before. You can get these from Big Bad Toy Store and other kind of third party sites that sell random third party stuff from, you know, China, AliExpress, you can try that too. Very many different places you can probably pick these up. I believe they probably go for around $100 or more each, so not exactly cheap, but boy, I had a lot of fun playing with these three figures. Lots and lots of fun. Thank you very much for tuning into this video of three Shadow Ninjas by VToys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, everyone. Take care.